Ah, the legendary Logitech G303. This was discontinued a few years back, and to get your hands on one, you really have to bust open that wallet on the secondary market. A big part of the reason why it's remained so in demand is due to this man, Shroud, who needs no introduction, and thanks to him, it's back, and it's wireless, but there are some changes to the overall size and shape that you'll want to be aware of before you decide to buy. You ready? Let's go! The G303 Shroud Edition Wireless should be available shortly after you're seeing this, priced at $129.99 US. This is a symmetrical shape, it's not a true ambi as we only have side buttons on the left side. It uses the same Lightspeed Wireless and Hero 25K sensor from the Superlight. Top shell here is black, sides are like a translucent smoke, coating feels identical to the Superlight. That Logitech coating is not my favorite, looks kind of greasy all the time, but at least we know what we're getting. There's no RGB to speak of, so we still have that crazy long battery life of like 145 hours. I've played for days and days with this mouse right out of the box and I haven't had to recharge it yet. Charging this time is USB-C, finally. No braided cable on this one though, no paracord-like cable. It's a pretty flexible, thin, rubberized cable. The plug is textured. I really like that the opening on this mouse is big enough to use like whatever USB-C cable you have laying around on your desk if you just need to charge. Also in the box is an extender and the receiver dongle here is small, labeled, and it fits in this little stash drawer in the back of the mouse that has a magnetic closure. Glides are additive-free PTFE in that grayish color and they're huge. One front, one rear, and a ring around the sensor. Unfortunately, like most Logitech mice, there are no extras in the box. The glide is faster on this mouse than the Superlight, which really surprised me. They also have these circular markings on the side, which Logitech says are the approximate finger placements of Shroud himself. So even if you can't play like Shroud, you can at least put your fingers where he does. There is more than meets the eye here when it comes to the design. This isn't just a wireless G303. It is still that classic diamond shape, but they have made a few tweaks here. I don't have an OG303 in-house to compare, so there are probably some subtle changes to the shape that I'm missing, but overall, the angles look a little more rounded off than the original, and the dimensions are different. Based on the original measurements, this is 2 millimeters longer, 4 millimeters wider, and 3 millimeters taller at the hump. Those are not insignificant changes and may leave some players with smaller hands who were excited for this mouse to come back feeling left out. With a hand measurement of 20.5 by 10.5 centimeters, this makes this pretty much an automatic claw grip mouse for me. Those of you that fingertip the original 303 may have a bit of an issue doing that here between the extra width and the height. It doesn't work great in fingertip for me, and trying to palm this mouse puts the front side button just out of reach. But as somebody who normally uses a hybrid claw palm grip, I love the shape of this mouse. The major reason I don't use the GPW or the Superlight has everything to do with how safe the shape is. It's just like this big pill shape. I never feel like I grab it the same way twice, and some aspects of my grip is always slipping or needing readjustment. The diamond shape here just anchors this thing into my hand. I use my thumb and my outer fingers to pull it back into my palm and it stays there. I completely forget about how I'm holding this mouse. It tapers pretty sharp on both sides as it moves towards the bottom. Nice little grooves in there. That also helps with that anchoring and it makes lift off really easy too. I know there were some tweaks made to the actual switch positions under the triggers and the tensioning here. All I can say about that is that these triggers are super, super fast. There's no meaningful pre-travel at all. No post-travel, no side play, I can actuate these simply by relaxing my fingers all the way. The DPI button is now flush with the top of the mouse, and where it's positioned, it's very unlikely you'd ever accidentally hit this. Side buttons feel really good, very crispy, and they seem to be positioned roughly the same, but a different shape than the original. It looks like I personally would have preferred the shape on the original side buttons, as I like to just roll my thumb up to trigger that rear side button. I use it for crouch and slide in a lot of games. Where these are positioned on top of the ridge on the side means it has to be a very deliberate move to trigger those. The scroll wheel is rubberized, but smooth to the touch no ridges. To me, it feels a little heavier to actuate than the super light. It's so low to the triggers that I can just reach over and depress it. Love that. I do like the feel of the scroll itself. It has a pretty pronounced notched feeling, but I'm not crazy about the sound. It's loud. Logitech isn't really saying what kind of switches that they're using in this, and I'm not about to tear down my only copy to find out. Leave that to Bearded Bob, but I'm assuming they're using some version of the Omron 20 mils. I'm pretty sure the issue of Logitech mice double clicking got solved a while back. I don't feel like I've heard anything about that in ages. So the stated weight on this mouse is 75 grams, and my scale agrees with that, more or less. It feels really balanced as well. I've been maining the Final Mouse Starlight a lot lately, the medium and fingertip. It's obviously a lot lighter, but I had no trouble adjusting to this mouse at all. 
feels absolutely great in game. At the time of me doing this review, this mouse was not yet supported in G-Hub, but pro tip, use the Logitech Onboard Memory Manager instead. If you haven't seen this, it's a really simple settings flasher for Logitech stuff, and you don't even have to install G-Hub if you don't want. I'll link this in the description. So there's not really too much else to cover here. With this being Logitech, we really don't have to worry about the sensor or the firmware or the wireless performance. Whether or not this mouse is gonna be for you all comes down to size and shape, so hopefully I painted a clear picture on that. I don't really have anything bad to say that's not really subjective, like the coating, the sound on the scroll wheel, and I probably would have preferred that bigger rear side button, but none of those things are deal breakers for me personally. The mouse scene has been pretty stale lately, so this was great to see. Logitech already has some pretty classic mouse designs on their catalog, and I hope we see a continued trend of these wireless remasters. I'm sure the shroud creating demand for this was a big catalyst for getting this made, but I know there are a lot of people out there still waiting on that wireless remaster of the G703. In the meantime, I'll be running Kovac drills to see whether it's going to be this mouse or the final mouse starlight that's going to be taking my main spot going forward and even though we've had a great run I think I'm saying goodbye to the Orochi V2 for now. So at this point this channel is funded almost exclusively through sponsored ad reads. I don't take any ad money from the companies whose products I review and AdSense and affiliate sales dollars make up a very small percentage. If you enjoy the content but would rather watch with no sponsor reads like this one you can watch all my videos ad free over at Nebula. Nebula is an independent streaming platform built by me and a lot of other creators you've probably heard of like the king of tech reviews himself MKBHD, Farouk from iPhone Do, and the man who saved my personal finances, Ali Abdal. We created Nebula to be able to upload what we want without fear of performance from the YouTube algorithm because I just can't bring myself to slap my O face on a thumbnail. And the best way to get access to Nebula is through Curiosity Stream, the sponsor of today's video. Curiosity Stream is the world's leading documentary streaming platform with thousands of really high quality, high budget documentaries. Stop shotgunning too hot to handle and put some good stuff in your brain instead. Like Rock the Park, a new series which follows Colton and Jack as they adventure through some seriously impressive scenery on their tour of the U.S. national parks. I've added several things to my bucket list after watching this. And Curiosity Stream loves to support independent creators, so they have a bundle with Nebula where you can get access to both catalogs for 26% off or $14.79 per year. That's not per month, that's a per year price, and you get access to everything on Nebula and everything on Curiosity Stream. If that sounds like a good deal to you, head over to curiositystream.com slash badseedtech to get started. Big thanks to Curiosity Stream for continuing to support the channel and thank you so much for your time. I understand how valuable it is, and this channel simply wouldn't exist without the support from you and our sponsors. All right, any questions, hit me in the comments, and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.